hello guys welcome to the youtube channel simulation by hm so we are going to develop a model for supercapacitor in console and it's a single stack axismetric kind of thing so let's jump right into the simulation so the very first thing is the model wizard here and we're going to choose 2d axismetric and we are going to choose uh, secondary current distribution here from electrochemistry this is the module that we are going to use just double click it and that's get added here and the next thing is we want to choose the study type and we are going to do time dependent study and double click it and just wait here we are so the very first thing is we need parameters to define our geometry here as well as the material properties that we are going to need so the for those i already have a model here so we can just simply copy paste that one and move it here now you can pause the video and you can check all of them but just for clarification i'm going to describe that anyway so the first thing is this is like the inner radius since it's an axisymmetric like a cylindrical thing so there definitely has to be some inner radius and the lc and la they are kind of the thickness of our electrodes, cathode and anodes. We are going to develop a symmetric uh, capacitor, that's why they are both the same. And sandwiched in between these two electrodes, we will have electrolyte, that's like 10 micrometer. And uh, H cap is the height of that stack. Sigma E is the conductivity of electrolyte and sigma AC that is the conductivity of uh, electrodes. Uh, basically both anode and cathode, they have the same uh, thermal conductivity. I am as assuming they are both made up of carbon based uh, material and The first thing would be the geometry part and let's create our rectangle and Let's define the thickness that would be L a Or I'll see it's, it's It's the same either way and height would be H cap and Here we are are in and let's just say build selected yeah that's this is our cathode the next thing we need is to create another rectangle to for the electrolyte domain and that would be le and the height h cap and finally r in plus the thickness of our cathode l a or anode it's fine and we can see yeah there we go electrolyte and finally we will have one last domain that would be the second electrode and simply let's just copy this one from there to here and add the length of electrolyte width of the anode is the same as uh, the other one so we can say l a here as well and finally h cap there we go so that would be our domain the next thing is uh, the materials so since we have electrolyte and electrodes are similar so we can add two blank materials and as you can see since for this particular module we only need one property but there is another one for example this one it is selecting both of them let's say i want the material uh, defined here specifically for electrolyte we can just rename that one as electrolyte and that would be sigma e then for this one we can select these two and that this would also no sorry this would be sigma a and c sigma yeah for electrodes yeah and we can write here as electrode yep now the very first thing is like as you can see this is the secondary current distribution and these are the two main dependent variables that we are going to solve this whole module for and uh yep axis metric we uh, nothing is selected here but we can just ignore that insulation for the timing we haven't applied any kind of uh, boundary condition here so that's why all of them are selected initial condition it's zero zero voltage throughout the domain and now we want now since 
you can notice that electrolyte all three of them is considered as electrolyte but we don't want that we want this one and this one to be electrodes porous electrodes to be precise so we can add this this one porous electrode and we can select this too and now if we go back you can see only one of the domain is highlighted that means only this one is treated as an electrolyte and these two are for electrodes now if you press this button down option you can see that right now it's porous electrode reactions but i don't want the reactions yet because in electrolyte we want the reactions to be as minimum as possible in fact in ideal superclusters there is only electrostatic charge storage no ferradic or reaction based storage so we don't, don't want this one so we can you can right click on that one and we have this another option called porous matrix double layer capacitance select this one and you can disable this one this simply just disable it and now we only need to deal with this one but before that let's check the properties here in the porous electrode as you can see the electrolyte volume fraction now this is how the this module deals with the whole porous thing it just kind of divides the whole domain into uh, a fraction like only 50% of it this is liquid and 50% is solid but under normal conditions we kind of have like a small uh, well uh, fraction maybe 0.25 or something or even less than that and 0.75 as the electrode or solid part and only 25% of is liquid or electrolyte and the rest of the properties they are just kind of automatically picked up from the material section now one more thing did, uh, notice that before there was only for electrode there was only one property but now there is another property which is electrical conductivity but we only had electrolyte conductivity before and the reason for this extra uh, material property is because we added this extra a sub node porous electrode so since we now specified that it's not just electrolyte but there is solid as well so we need to specify that uh, yeah, I sorry I made a mistake here this one is supposed to go there and this is actually electrolyte so we can just say e, yeah and yep and finally this section now this is pretty standard equation uh, it, this is how all the literatures, uh, all the research papers in the past, they kind of deal with this thing, like how uh, double layer capacitance should be dealt with, and, and this is like pretty standard equation. So you can simply use this to be 0 0.13. There are different models for that. Constant differential, uh, you can study that on the, your own in different literature reviews and papers and stuff. As for this one, uh, this value is pretty varying. Uh, because based on different materials you get different uh, surface uh, specific surface area per unit volume and for the time being uh, the one of the paper that I read last time it used a value 1.9 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 9 I believe uh, yeah that's like nano something so not nano it's the opposite yeah plus 9 so we can for the time being assume this value as, as it is yep and now that's it for that now next is we need to add uh, from wh which side we're going to apply the current and for that we can simply go electrode here and we have this charge discharge cycling and uh, this is about uh, you see this is a boundary condition like these solid parts they are domain based uh, operations and when you have this single line kind of thing we, this is our boundary condition this is like a line operation so we need to let's say i'm going to apply on this side the current and this is the current now one pair is quite big so let's multiply it with a little bit lower value and this is the discharging current and the for the discharging we want up till which lowest possible voltage it goes so this is like default thing zero volt and we also want this to be multiplied by the exact same value 0.01 yeah and additionally since uh, check like this initial condition we have zero right we can change that but let's say we are going from starting from zero volts for that this thing here this is discharge first but since the volt initial voltage that we want is zero 
so we want to make sure that this is charged first and it the charging needs to start from zero volts yep mm -hmm. and since this is from uh, the side where we are applying current so we also need a ground point or line in this case we would be applying electric ground that would be the opposite side yep so we have cathode electrolyte and anode and i believe yeah that's pretty much it that's it and finally we have mesh uh, we can just go with normal it's fine just simple doll so let's just just go with the rough rough rougher mesh and here we are so this is the time domain we want to specify the time let's say i want the time stop to be 0 0.25 and i want this to go maybe up till let's say 20 seconds that should do uh, and finally you can either compute from here or here it's your choice just press it and just wait for it and this is a actually quite short simulation so it will run quite yeah listen this one spike means that the voltage when it reaches the maximum or less possible value just goes like it shifts in the other direction it's like charging then it's charging charging discharging kind of thing and once it reaches its desired time which was i suppose 10 seconds yeah this will take some time so let's just cancel it and let's keep the time small here maybe a little bit changes yeah so the maximum voltage is like one let's keep it 2.7 and uh, let's keep the time instead of 20 maybe five should do yeah that's pretty okay pretty much okay mm -hmm. yeah that should do that's easy and quite fast yep so here we go yep there's a the simulation you see this is how the voltage behaves now this looks pretty weird though because normally you have like uh, this kind of symmetrical behavior throughout and uh, it's actually normal as well because in the last few months i have been running quite a lot of simulation the first vibration or the first oscillation kind of behaves a little weird but after that these are all kind of symmetric kind of in asymmetric nature as for the results other results and this one yep and since we are running axisymmetric uh, simulation so this would be probably yeah something like that what we can do is we can add a volume result and p fill this is uh, liquid based let's say i want but actually liquid is in the entire one so it's better we can delete these two and there we go that's all the current, uh, voltage values and we can change this maybe mm, this one Yep. It based on how the charging and discharging proceeds uh, this whole thing this whole voltage thing kind of distributes itself according to that so that's it for the simulation thank you so much for watching and please make sure to like and subscribe my channel